I think my session is a, a little bit uh, different um, um, if you compare it with uh, my um, with my predecessor um, speakers here, um, because what I will show to you is uh, what we have done at our company uh, to become successful with uh, mobile applications um, that support our host application. So um, I will divide this session in two parts. First part is uh, about the story, how we, got, um, <coughs> how we uh, get there uh, at the end. And uh, the second part, um, I will show you the application and um, all the, the fine stuff in it. Okay. At the beginning, something about me. Um, so my first business application, I developed myself. This mobile application, I have not developed myself. This, is, uh, <coughs> this uh, application was developed by Ecke. He's sitting in the front of me and he will show the software to you later on. Um, but my whole uh, life was about software development and uh, software innovation. So um, very early in 1992, uh, in 1992, um, I become a professional software developer. Um, there, my first uh, employment uh, took place and uh, later on I switched in the business world and um, yes, I got a master degree in leading innovation and change from the York St. John University and um, currently I'm a doctoral student <coughs> in, uh, at Bradford University School of Management. So. Um, with mobile development, I, <clears throat> I'm dealing since uh, 2010 myself, and um, with web development, I am dealing with uh, since 2011. So, and last year I acquired a company and was announced its CEO. And this company is the ICSIS Informationssysteme uh, GmbH. So, next slide is about this company. So this company is a software, a software manufacturer and uh, it's specialized uh, in the social economy industry. So what does this mean? Um, they are doing software for nursing homes and uh, for ambulatory care services. So it's uh, mobile nurses and um, this software uh, with this software, uh, meanwhile, we have 1,500 customers. Um, a lot of these customers are enterprise-sized, uh, uh, such as the Bavarian Red Cross, for instance. And there are about 20,000 active software users within these um, companies, within these 1,500 uh, companies. So, and last year, uh, we celebrated our 25th uh, anniversary. So uh, we have a, a long history in this branch. So and um, in the market, uh, we have a share uh, of about 15%, uh, I think. So it's uh, a good size. So and when I took over this company, um, there was a bad thing. They had mobile software within this company, but this software was very, very unstable. And uh, in my opinion, it was a sort of semi-professional um, because it was made with HTML5, with uh, CSS, JavaScript, and, and Sencha Touch. So, and um, one big problem in our, uh, <clears throat> in our branch is um, you have to drive cars uh, within your car to your patients, for instance. Um, you have uh, old walls in the elderly homes, for instance. So very thick walls. So uh, if you haven't uh, uh, an overall coverage with your um, wireless LAN, um, then it's a bad thing to count on HDLM5. And uh, the guys before me have tried to use the offline capabilities in order to cache data uh, when the coverage is bad. 
and that was not a good idea. Um, so, and um, because I found this, um, <clears throat> I made a survey. So, how did I uh, have and how I've, I have done this survey? So, I called the people to talk to them. Yeah? And um, what the people said to me was around 100 of our customers. So, most of them already gave up uh, with this old stuff. And the rest of them were very unsatisfied. So the issue, the issues they had, um, especially uh, data submission issues because of this HTML5 stuff. Um, they felt performance issues because um, they had loads of uh, data sets within this application delivered to the browser. Um, have been sort of 2,000 patients uh, on the browser in the offline database and uh, it was a mess, it was not running very, very good. So, um, then they had issues with the user interface because of this. It, uh, was not, uh, they were not able to uh, scroll continuously without having issues while doing this. And um, so, what we had to do, we had to conduct a, a rigorous rethinking process. So, and um, then I asked myself how to do this. Uh, should I ask some customers? What should I do? No idea. So, and then we made a plan. So, we did it like research. The first step we took was a qualitative research round through open-ended one-to-one interviews. So we recorded these interviews and trans uh, transcribed this and so on. And then we analyzed what the people had said to us. So, and the results have been um, they wanted freedom in selecting a mobile device. Some of them th said, okay, I want to, use, want to use a tablet PC. Other ones said, okay, uh, for me, a smartphone um, would be good. And uh, this smartphone, um, I, um, it, it must be waterproof uh, because uh, I have to wash my patients. And it may be that this smartphone tries to swim in a bath tube or something like that. And um, so... The wishes were never ending. They wanted to select their mobile device, their own. So, and second, and uh, this, uh, this was a very uh, answer, a very, very often answer. Um, they wanted, and uh, they used this term, they wanted that it is as easy to use as WhatsApp. And then we asked why. So, because all of them, or most of them, use it, yeah? even the older ones, because um, they wanted to stay in touch with their grandchildren. Yeah? Without WhatsApp, it wasn't possible anymore. So, they had to use WhatsApp. So, and that was good for us. So, the older nurses um, have been, simul <coughs> have been uh, um, able to use WhatsApp, and that's was a good idea or a good, good that was good news for us because okay we could do software native software for mobile devices and they would use it so the third wish they had it must everywhere to use yeah? they wanted to use it everywhere even in areas with bad or even none coverage yeah? So and the reason was, okay, um, especially with the Bavarian Red Cross, there are very high mountains and um, coverage is very bad. Uh, you are not able to drive 10 minutes through the mountains uh, without, to lose, without to lose coverage in between. So or if you are visiting a patient, um, there is no coverage in the houses, for instance. And um, uh, that was bad and they wanted to use the software even in this case. So then they said, okay, 
no manual thinking needs. So the software has to care about me. Uh, I, I don't want to think anything or something like this. Um, the software should detect, okay, is there coverage or is there no coverage? So, and if there is coverage, okay, put the transactions into the database on the host, and if not, then leave it on the device. So, and uh, by law, the nurses are forced to document their doings in a timely manner. Uh, that means they want it no longer to go to their desktop computers in between. So especially in the um, nursing homes or uh, elderly homes, um, before they had to go to their um, computers because the software was not able to cover all the things, all their doings they had to do. So, and after we have uh, found out this, um, we went to the second research round. And that was qualitative research through observing people at their work. So this is a, um, a, special, a special sport of Ecke. He loves it um, to observe people um, and to have a look at what they are doing concrete. So, and we said, okay, let us find some old school companies um, who are still doing their documentation work on paper. Yeah. So <clears throat> we observed the people for some weeks and um, we noted every step they have done and so on. And then after that we analyzed our findings from these observations and created load, loads of uh, UI mockups and user stories. So we wrote, we wrote, we wrote, and we designed, designed, and designed. And then, when we became ready, um, we went into our third strap, uh, or, or our third step of investigation. So, and that was qualitative focus groups. What does this mean? So <clears throat> we invited the people in small groups and discussed our mock-ups and the user stories with them. Yeah. So, and um, especially the people we had ob observed before. So with them we discussed our uh, results and uh, after this we refined our mock-up work and uh, wrote down the definitive uh, backlog with all the user stories in it. And this was how we did our research before we wrote the, for, uh, the first code of line, uh, line of code, excuse me. So now the story, how we came to Qt. Uh, why use Qt and not uh, any other tool? There are enough uh, uh, development environments and so on, but why did we go with Qt? So after our research, we knew very, very well what our customers expect from us with the next generation of our mobile apps. So, but now we were forced to make a decision regarding this development environment. So before we postponed it time and time again, so so it was fun about to do the research with our customers, but um, the decision with the development environment we postponed all the time. So, and um, today I can say it was, uh, it was a quite hard way to decide for the right environment. So, and uh, as we guys at our side um, are developing with C Sharp and the .NET environment on our host system, we thought it a good idea to give Xamarin a try. Yeah. So all the programmers were able to speak C Sharp, and if you go with Xamarin, um, you are able to do this again. So why not trying it? 
So, and since our users wanted to have multiple platforms, so it was obvious to give Xamarin a try. Uh, Microsoft uh, ha had acquired this company and um, we would still stand with uh, C Sharp. So, what we have done then is, okay, we created some serious test apps. So, small test apps, but um, with all the functionality we need. So, but it early turns out that it wasn't a good idea. So, and why? So, the app sizes were far too big. So, it's, uh, it's compiled in a kind of Linux container and then delivered to the devices. It was too big. So, and the apps have been too slow in terms of customer experience. So, continuous scrolling was better than with HTML5, but it wasn't good enough. It was not that I could scroll and it was as, in, <coughs> um, as um, fast as my finger. So, and our developers were not amused that they had to use different UI editing stuff for different operating systems. So, it was not, it felt not to be out of one hand for the different operating systems. So, and, and that's the reason why we gave up Xamarin. Our developers uh, have not become warm with this. So, after that, I remembered my old friend Ecke. He's sitting in the front of me. And he recommended us, yo, let us see what QT is able to do for us. At the end, it was our rescue, and I will show you why. So, Ecke had great experience with BlackBerry 10 development. So, QML was not a foreign word for him. So, QML, he used already um, with BB10 and the QNX operating system behind it. And um, he, recommend, he recommended us to um, review QT, um, since the development approach would be very similar to the BB10 one. So then he created the same series apps and showed us the results. Uh, we were flashed, I must say. Uh, this is not only a word, uh, this is the truth. We were flashed. The app sizes were smaller. We had groundbreaking performance. So I have to say, um, he uses a mix of uh, QML and C++. But, uh, and he said without C++ it wouldn't be so, so fast. So, okay. So, and the, the ease to use the developer tools convinced our other developers very, very soon. So we decided to go with QT. So, and the time to complete the test apps was 34% less than with Xamarin. That would mean a good, por uh, <coughs> good portion less time to market and, this, uh, and thus um, less development costs. Okay, um, it would not mean that is 34 percent less um, time to market, um, but we think about 20 percent because there was a little learning curve in it yeah? because the developers had to learn from Ecke how to use this. So and even Ecke himself had learned about Qt much. Um, because um, at this time we decided for QT, um, yeah, he was fighting against some issues, but uh, these issues were solved very, very soon. So, and um, in practice it turned out at the end that there is even a lot of fun in play with QT development. So, Ecke emphasized the excellent uh, QT community the people at QT company, he said, are both frank and experienced, and even the most complex issues 
he was able to solve very, very fast with the help of those excellent people within this circle of experts. So um, he said it was a great experience um, to get help so fast and everybody is willing to help in this circle. So and overall, we are more than satisfied with our decision in favor of QT. So now some details about how we solved this thing with all the bad coverage areas. So we have invented something that we call the intelligent queuing technology. How does this technology work? So for our industry, it's excellent invention and um, it works as follows. If there is sufficient coverage and um, the device um, has to send data out, then the data will submit it just in time. If not, then each transaction will be queued and this queued will be watched all the time. So if then coverage is sufficient again, then the queue transactions will be handled accordingly. So if the coverage will collapse during data submission again, the queue will be then set in a kind of pause mode. And if the coverage is sufficient again then, then the queue will be restarted. So, and there is no need anymore for the users to synchronize anything by hand. So every time um, the application on the device is willing to send something, it is able to send because the library will call it and for the app it is seeming, uh, seemingly sent out. So, and the rest is then up to the queue and this queue is watched permanently. So, um, that's only a very uh, simple description of what is really behind the scenes. Um, it was, uh, this was the most um, time demanding thing of the whole application. Uh, the application has uh, really hundreds of functions and hundreds of, uh, of, of screen details and details in the screens and UI and so on, but uh, this was the most time con consuming thing because um, it is very, very hard to test. Yeah. So there are two states. One state is no coverage and the other, and the other state is, okay, server is down or something like that. So there is coverage but I'm not able to send out the data because the server has an issue. So, and these two different things are different handled. And that's uh, very, very difficult, but we did it, and now it is excellent. So another thing was data protection. So, next year we will get a new law in the, in the EU, uh, regarding the data protection and um, it's quite hard for a company to fulfill this law um, if you are storing medical data about persons, about human beings, so to say. So, and this law forces us that every time you log out and there's uh, no data to transmit on this, um, so to say, after the shift of the nurse, when the shift ends and she logs out, then the data will be destroyed within this application. Uh, there is no single line of data in this application then. It means next time, if the next nurse logs on, then all the data will be reloaded again on this device. So, and that's all a cool thing, how Ecke did it. Um, it works that all um, data loading processes um, will be fired in parallel, hundreds of them. So there is no one call to the database, there are thousand calls in parallel, so that the data will get out of the database faster. 
So second thing was a secure transaction handling on both the client and the server side. So one thing is, uh, it's very difficult. So what if when the client tries to send some data to the server, the server um, stores the data successfully and then coverage breaks together. Yeah? So that the server is not able to answer the client and um, give him a message, okay, data is stored, all things are okay. And then the client will hold this transaction in the queue and send it again. So, and I don't want doubling the data at the end. So the <clears throat> client will fire the <coughs> transaction as, oft, as often as he gets um, an okay back. So, and that's why we have this secure transaction handling. Every transaction has a single idea, a uh, single ID, and um, this ID will use to secure these transactions so that every transaction will be written to the database only once. So now before we show it to you, some details uh, regarding the comprehensiveness of this application. So we transfer from the server to the client application the data of all clients, means all patients. Uh, the data of all employees regarding telephone numbers and so on. Um, all data regarding the doctors, the relatives and so on. All this data is on board. So this is the main data. Then they wanted to texting, messaging and signing through the app. So then the relationships between all the clients, the employees, the doctors, the relatives and so on, um, we had to show within this app to represent it via the user interface. So and um, as it is a software to track the nursing, uh, the, to track what the nurses do, um, we had to submit all the tours of one day. Um, that such a mobile nursing nursing service has, we had to send it to the um, to the app because it um, must be possible to switch single patients uh, between the tours. So if you have in one mobile service 10 tours because one nurse uh, will visit 10 patients and the service has 100 patients, so you have uh, 10 tours, but during a tour or short before a tour, it may be that the nurse becomes ill. So, and if the nurse is ill, all their work will be shared to the other nurses, means to the other tours. So, and all this must work without a connection to the server, because they want to work if they have no server connection. So, and if they get a call in house of a patient, okay, please with this patient next, then the nurses must be able to shift a patient from one tour to their own tour. And all this is possible without a server connection. So this is a, a full client application. So another thing with our application is uh, the vital value acquisition, for instance. So like Pulse and so on. So, uh, they wanted via voice text documentation, means text uh, speech uh, recognition. Uh, speech to text and so on. In case of deviations from the plant, uh, it means 
it was planned that the patient would be washed on a day, but the patient said, okay, oh no, no, um, I'm not dirty, and water is wet, I don't like wet water, so they had to document that this has happened, for instance. So, and um, a really interesting thing, Ecke will show it to you later on, is the wound documentation. Uh, it means if there is a patient with an open wound, um, because a patient is not able to uh, leave the bed anymore, uh, then this will lead to wounds from the laying in the bed and so on. And this they had to document, and uh, they had to document um, the uh, correct position where this wound is and so on. And there are some interesting things in the application we will show to you later on. So now the conclusion from the things I said until now. Um, mobile first was a secret that we now have so much happy customers. So um, we made not the mistake to write first the application, uh, then show it to the customers uh, 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 in order to to find that they don't want it. So all the hard work we did um, through re research before we wrote the first line of code, I think that is the good one. So and mobile first for us meant also uh, that we first created the mobile application without any connection to the server. So we created a lot of JSON files as the first database for the mobile application and used only these JSON files um, to simulate all the work on the client. So then we went back to our customers, showed the working application and they said, okay, wonderful, I want to use it uh, tomorrow. And we said, oh, uh, it's not possible because there is no server in, <laughs> in the background now. So, and then we created a new layer to access our database. So we throw our data access uh, compound, components uh, from our host application away um, and created new ones uh, on the basis of RESTful web services and we used all the things you can imagine. So we have uh, new caching mechanisms. So if they uh, load the data in the morning, on their devices, most of them want the same data. The patients are all the same. So the first one has to wait 20 seconds, the next one half a second, because it's all cached in the, in the uh, <coughs> memory of the, of the server. So and um, as we have very big customers, and um, we must be able to not only have one server, but, against, uh, but uh, a whole lot of servers in a cluster. Uh, we uh, use the Redis cache to uh, synchronize in memory between all the single servers this cache. And that is why, why this application is very fast. So, and um, no matter what we have done, we considered any time bad network coverage. And every single step we did, we said to ourselves, okay, will this work when there is bad network coverage or not? Uh, that was the, the important thing for us. So, and um, what we also did, um, we tried to avoid freezed screens. So a freezed screen for me is a screen where nothing happens, and the customer waits. So our customers, we thought, they don't have to wait, and if they have to wait, they must be informed that they have to wait about the progress, yeah? so that they have an idea, okay, how long I have to wait, I have still to wait. So that's one, one imp very important thing, that there is no situation 
where the user experience uh, where the users experience uh, free screens. That's in a way. So and now I want to switch to the live demo. There are some further interesting features. Are you ready, Ecke? Yes. So I switch to some. <coughs> Hi, I'm Ecke. I'm an independent software architect here from Germany. And as you probably can see, I'm doing software development since a very long time. And this process application is one of my complexest and uh, applications I ever built. And I have to say, using the new Qt Quick Controls 2, this can be done in a really cool way in a short time frame and with satisfied uh, customers. If you are more interested into the details from the development side tomorrow at 12.20 or so, I have uh, above in the CO1 uh, my, my session how I did this application. So let's take a look. So here we go, this application runs on Android, on iOS, on tablets, on smartphones, uh, even on a really large uh, tablet of 24 uh, inch from, uh, from Samsung. And here, now I'm running it here on an uh, Android device. The application uh, always supports portrait and landscape, so you can hold it in all uh, orientations. And This is an application in Google Material style. We have the main navigation of the, of the app. This one here is from the uh, software displaying here on the screen. This is a Zoom meeting software. Uh, so here we have a, have a drawer with the main parts of the application, the tours, the clients, uh, persons, contracts, uh, and so on. And also, We have a bottom navigation. This is not uh, typical for Android applications, but it's also part of the material uh, style guide. But it's typical for iOS users to have the uh, navigation at the bottom. Uh, so we included this in, in this application. Uh, you can use the bottom navigation. It doesn't matter if you tap on the tours here. You get your tours, or if you choose the tours from the uh, drawer from the navigation. But it makes it easier to handle, uh, to work with, uh, with one, one hand to navigate this way. Here we have a tour of a nurse and, uh, there are more than this, uh, tour. I can switch and say, show me all tours. So, uh, the colors are not, uh, good visible here. It is a light, light blue. These are my own uh, tours, and the white tours are tours from other nurses. And as Roland uh, said, if someone is ill or so, I can tap on a tour and say, want I take over this tour to me? I say no, and, uh, and do, do this one. So we have a progress bar, this progress bar, uh, left beside the uh, start, the beginning uh, button, uh, tells you how much of the uh, missions of this uh, tour already are, are, are done. And you know at what time this tour starts, and if you want to start the tour, tap on this beginning, then it goes over and shows you all what must be done inside this tour. And there are different kind of tasks. This is here, Rüstzeit. This means the time the nurse needs before starting the work. It's not a real work at the patient. And, and I say, yes, start this one. And so, so start, start this one. And I say, I'm ready. Now, this task disappears from, from this list. I can switch here on the top, there's a radio button, I can say, show me all, then I oh, see all. I see the finished task and I see the open task I have, I have to do for this day. 
The next one is uh, Gerda Meyer. I'm arriving at Gerda Meyer and say, uh, start this one. When I go back, you see now this has switched. Before we had a green button, start this one. Now I can say stop or cancel. All of these uh, elements are uh, uh, visible or, or invisible or they are loaders behind uh, because they are more complex uh, things. You see above this wrist side is white. It had a, had a, a done, done marker and uh, this actual uh, task I'm working on is a dark blue. It has two buttons there. Uh, the next one has a light blue, it is not done. So there are very many uh, user uh, details, uh, UI, UI details, details, which are changing always. And this is smooth, it is fast. Uh, the user never has something uh, stopping or breaking or flickering or, or so. And so go on. Now I, I see here... Uh, in this um, mission for Gerda Meyer, uh, there are two different things uh, to do. I say, yes, I have done this, I have done, done this, and now the application knows, oh, all is done, are you finished? I am finished, because I can also add new ones uh, not uh, currently prepared for this customer, I can say there is a, a, a new one uh, to add. So now I go on and uh, say, Uh, here is uh, Bauer Christina, and if I tip on the icon of the uh, patient, then another page uh, uh, opens. I get the details from the patient. Uh, perhaps I have to make a, make a call. I tap on this one. This is a, a floating action uh, button. Uh, And behind this button, there is a, is a menu. And from this menu, there I have a different action I can make directly from this application, a phone call or send an SMS. Or if I'm on iOS, I can also uh, use a, what? Face, FaceTime, yes. I can use face, FaceTime. And if today is the birthday of the patient, then there is a special symbol telling them the patient has birthday, uh, so don't forget it. And here are the relations of other uh, persons, uh, of uh, doctors and uh, Angehörige, was that Angehörige? Relatives. Yeah, rel relatives, yes, relatives, the son, and there are some uh, vital values, here you see uh, blood, blood sugar, Bl blood sugar, is that so? Okay, good, blood sugar, um, and below as last the uh, contracts of this, uh, of this uh, client. Or I can simply uh, start here. In this case, we see an, another a new, new symbol, not a, not a marker, uh, simply to say, I have done this. Here I, I'm getting a symbol, I have to enter some vital value. And this vital value opens a new screen. And in this screen, I know I have to make an injection of insulin, and I know uh, the value could be between uh, zero and 500. I say uh, 300 and enter. I can add a remark uh, if there are uh, other measurements uh, done before. I would get a, get a list here and say, okay, it's done. Blutzucker, was ist? Dann endet. And uh, there are different um, text entries uh, depending from the kind of the value. Sometimes I have an integer or I have a, a, a numeric value with one or two decimals or I have two integers separated by, by, by a slash and for all I have built a specialized uh, editor so it is easy to enter for the nurses with, with a large uh, uh, numeric uh, uh, keyboard here. And, and so on, can, can go back and say I finished this tour here, I see in the progress bar so a third or so I have, uh, I have done. And 
uh, I can switch here to the uh, clients and there are thousands of clients here and I can scroll as fast as I want to do. Uh, okay, here you can, cannot see it, but here you see there is no, no flicker, nothing, uh, extremely fast. And all these, um, these lists are done with a data model behind of Q object uh, pointers. And I'm, I'm using Q objects uh, through, through the whole object, uh, through the whole application for, for this. I, uh, I'm always referencing the same object, not uh, anything by value between C++ and, uh, and QML. I will talk about this uh, tomorrow and tell you how, how I did this. So, clients, uh, opening a client, you see, we have done this before. We have persons, and persons can be employees, can be doctors. I can go to a doctor, and I see this doctor is uh, responsible for these clients, and I can go to a client, and uh, even if I'm here uh, in the client, from a doctor and so on, I can can go back uh, to my tour. I can can go on, can go back here. I'm always remembering the same position. These are all stack views on different uh, uh, um, uh, buttons here, and all remember their uh, position. And uh, it's extremely fast, as you can can see. And well, while I was working here, here is this uh, server queue still working working behind uh, all is green all is all is sent if i uh, tap on this i see it was successful transmitted to the server uh, uh, transmitted and if uh, there's no uh, coverage if the app, if the app is uh, offline then this uh, colored bar would be gray and uh, uh, the user knows it is not transferred yet. If there's a problem with the, with the server, for example, uh, then I'm trying five times if I can transmit this, uh, this data. And uh, if five times I couldn't transmit and to avoid an endless loop, because perhaps there's a problem with the, with the server also, um, I said this one uh, has, a, has a failure and I will uh, stop uh, uh, with the transmission and wait for, for the next time. And if the user does a log, log out and the application uh, detects there are still um, objects in the server queue, uh, then automatically without any uh, manual doing from the user, the application uh, at first checks is the queue active because we have a very slow uh, data transmission. I'm, I'm watching the uh, progress from the queued event for upload on, and download data. And if there's uh, some bytes going uh, over the line, I know it is active. I'm still waiting and so show progress uh, until all is transmitted. If it is not, uh, and the user is offline, then he gets a message, please went to another place, so you are uh, online, we must transmit the data. Because as Roland says from uh, EU law, uh, if the user does a log out, all data will be uh, uh, cleared uh, from the device, and at the starting the app, all data will be, will be re reloaded. Yeah, also <coughs> one rule uh, at our company, uh, don't risk the battery of your devices. So, and uh, this um, enables us to not risk the battery. So, uh, try to imagine um, <clears throat> if you would try to send in a loop all these things, um, although your server is um, broken, for instance, um, server, there is <coughs> coverage, but the server is broken, and you would try to send, to send, to send, to send, um, then a battery uh, that would uh, have a life of eight hours or so uh, <coughs> will go down in one hour, uh, and it's empty. So and that's very very important yeah. to consider this. Okay, see, we have no five, no five, five minutes or what? Wissen Sie noch, wie lange? Ach so, okay, ich brauche noch, äh, ich brauche noch drei Minuten, sowas ungefähr. Dann habe ich alles soweit gezeigt. Äh, okay, äh, back in back into English. <laughs> um, 
So this was a, a small um, introduction of this application. Here this is the uh, version for the ambulant services, the uh, outpatient work. Um, we are also just uh, working on just working on the uh, version for the uh, stationär um, in hmm? Elderly homes for the elderly homes. So, wo war denn jetzt die App? And there's one of the things is I have to make a wound documentation. And uh, this application, uh, there's also a desktop application where all these uh, coordinates uh, of the uh, wounds uh, from, from this picture uh, are documented. And uh, the goal, the challenge was to get exactly uh, the same coordinates from the mobile device, even with different uh, DPIs and, and so on. And, but it worked really great. And so uh, I can scroll around and say, here I do a long, long press. And after doing a long press, a marker appears. But with my finger, I'm not uh, kind of uh, so, so fine adjust as uh, doing this with a mouse and a click on the desktop. And so here I have two sliders and I can move around and say, yes, there it is. And then the uh, bound point is added and the coordinates sent to the server and appears at the same position on the um, uh, desktop application. So and at the as last. Thing, dann wechselst du mal kurz zu dem hier. Achso, ich muss hier die Freigabe aufheben. Ich muss du die aufheben, ja, aus der Freigabe aufheben. So, from a logistics standpoint, afterwards there will be dinner served outside. And after the dinner, don't leave this building because there will be the party on the, on the upper floor. So, starting at 7. So, uh, don't run away. And don't forget to mm -hmm. update your Google Summit uh, app to give a, uh, to vote for this or so give some uh, rating for this uh, presentation here, as well as for all the others that will participate. And uh, there's good feedback for, the, for our guests here that uh, take the effort to mm -hmm. present here. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. There's it in the queue app. Yeah. There's good words on the app. There is the ability to go to the uh, track. That's it. You go to the uh, okay. presentation. And once the presentation is over, you can give it a rating. Uh, oh, great. Right. Uh, one, one to star, five stars, whatever, and some comments and so on. Okay, the last uh, demo. Um, if using a tablet, then in many cases a team is sharing a tablet. And so. Uh, they have to do a very fast and secure log in and log out into the application. So they go uh, go around, and so this is easy. This is a waiter log. This is normal, normally used in restaurants or, or so. You have magnetic keys with a secure key in. And this is mounted directly beside the uh, tablet. This is connected via Bluetooth LE -L -E to this Android tablet. And so I'm doing my login and I'm having my, my tour. If I'm ready, I switch off doing a log, log out. And next comes in and I'm getting another, another, another tour. And doing a log out. This is a use case of Bluetooth LE of a waiter lock in a mobile business application and easy done with, with Qt and it works on, uh, on Android and it works on, on iOS with an iPad the same way. And this was the only device we have found uh, <coughs> which manages lock in and lock out. Lock in, put the stick in, lock out, take the stick out. So um, <coughs> if you would uh, use um, your thumb, for instance, your fingerprint to log in, you have to use f your fingerprint to log out, and you are able to forget to log out. With this waiter lock, you are not able to forget to log out, because this is on your trousers. Huh? Log in, document, log out, you go away, and this is connected to your trouser, you log out automatically. 
this is, uh, <coughs> this is uh, magnetism, so there is no chance this will break here. Uh, it's very secure in for industry performance. So I think so, this was a short introduction. What you can really do with uh, with Qt in a mobile application with the current controls available from Qt, and this is really different to the things uh, available two years ago or so. Uh, question: uh, How many percent uh, of the code is written in uh, Qt and C++ and how many percent? This application is only built by me. One hundred percent Qt. One hundred percent. Things that are related to Android and uh, iOS. Um, how is I, I wouldn't have been able to write the same application for uh, native for, for Android and for iOS in the same time. This is C and Q. This is C and and Q. All the business logic is done with uh, with C plus plus. All the Complex UI logic also is done using an invocable method in, uh, in C++. And um, uh, based on the new QTFIC controls too, uh, they exist since uh, Q5.7 uh, and they are complete new written. It is not uh, QTFIC controls new version, it is really a new uh, UI control framework and these UI controls uh, itself also are defined in C++ and all, only customized in, in QL. And that's why they are so, so fast. And it's really easy to write such an application in a short time frame. I did all from the uh, alone in a very short time frame. Um, New seven months. Less, less for the first uh, test. Yes, six, seven months or so. Seven months for the audit. It's yeah. done. And I started, um, the server was already, as Roland said, the server also was optimized and new written. We have uh, had only created the mockups uh, for the uh, data mockups to uh, do this uh, work parallel. I work on the UI and uh, uh, developers at ICSYS are, are working <coughs> on, the, on the server side. And in the meantime, the application is. Uh, out at uh, customers in real day live tests and uh, they are all happy and say it's so extremely fast and uh, really uh, great way to develop uh, mobile applications. And meanwhile we are now to uh, release a version for Windows 10. Not Windows 10 mobile, Windows 10. Why? Because um, the universities have a uh, device in the stores of the uh, elderly homes, so the touch screens in this size, uh, so they go mm -hmm. with the greater lot, which is up the touch screens, put the stick in, document uh, things and stick out their lot of the red. So we will have a compiled version for Windows 10, and that's it. Windows 10 mobile, the customers uh, ask uh, mm -hmm.
You can say this code one to one and can compile it from number seven. Yeah. How much platform uh, I have around 20 lines of C++ code and uh, the online offline detection in iOS doesn't work out of the box there. I need the readability uh, class to classify that uh, there are only uh, five, six lines and then there was another part at, at two, uh, at two, uh, uh, two lines I, I have. That really small uh, platform dependent code or the other thing. It's the same. More okay. questions. Thank you very much.